Hello, today I wanted to share some skills that are relevant for a research assistant job that you may wish to cultivate in order to stand out as a great candidate. So I've already talked a bit about my job and some of the other RA jobs that are available. So you may wish to check out these videos first to get an idea of what this job is about before diving into this video. And just a quick note that this is largely based on my experiences and opinions, and it is tailored more towards psychology, but some of this advice will apply to other research assistant jobs in other areas as well. So this video will focus on tangible or hard skills rather than soft skills, because I think it's a lot easier to track your progress where you are with them. And so it would be a great place to start picking them up and developing these first. So firstly, the degree. I know this isn't really a skill, but I feel like we need to talk about it to get it out of the way first. With a lot of positions, there is generally a requirement to have at least a relevant degree. And I think a lot of these roles will also require you to have an honors degree as well, which makes sense considering most of your practical research skills will be learned in your fourth year. And also back when I was looking for positions, I found that a lot of physicians asked for fourth year or honors or above in allied health or social sciences fields rather than a specific psychology degree. And there are quite a few positions that ask for uh, people to be doing their PhDs or have finished PhDs. And that's because they tend to require a more specialized skill set that you would have learned during your PhD. And of course, these kinds of positions generally come with a larger salary to match that experience. And speaking of the degree, we actually use anything that you learned during it. Well, not really, but there are some things you would have learned that will come in handy. Personally, I feel like a lot of the content that I learned during my undergrad was really great background knowledge and really helped me understand the bigger picture of why I'm doing my job and kind of the bigger picture behind the research that we do. But this knowledge hasn't actually been necessary for me to be able to actually do my job. So one part of my degree, which I think has been quite relevant and necessary for a research position is ethics. It's definitely important to abide by ethical principles in research and having them drilled into me during my undergrad has been actually quite helpful in contextualizing why we do certain things to protect these principles at work. And it's also quite important to know why we should care about these things um, because a lot of my work is dealing with directly with personal information, doing a lot of data management. So it's definitely helpful knowledge that is practically on a daily basis. And it's also very helpful to know the process of applying for ethics as chances are you'll probably assist with an ethics application in one form or another. And that's something that you'd probably have practice doing uh, during honours. And what about statistics? Now with statistics, I think it would really depend on the particular job or project that you're working on. In my job, I don't do any analyses at all, as there is a team that does that. But there have been times where knowledge of different, for, for example, uh, reliabilities and validities has been helpful uh, in order to do my job. But I feel like I could definitely get by without knowing how to do any statistics at all. So if you're not into stats, then you'll be pleased to know that there are jobs where you're not going to have to touch statistics. And there are jobs that will require to run analyses and they will generally expect you to have a knowledge of statistics that is quite standard across uh, psychology degrees. And they would expect you to have at least come across SBSS. But I still don't want to freak anybody out. Um, a lot of these jobs will uh, run you through how to do the particular analyses that they want. But it's definitely a big plus if you already have that knowledge and experience. And for any statistics that go beyond what you would have learned in your honours level stats class, these jobs will generally specify it as a requirement in the job description. So for example, I've seen some advertisements ask that the applicant have experience with experience sampling methods or multi-level modeling, or they need to have done a meta-analysis before. So if you've used a particularly advanced statistical method during your honors or any other projects, then that's definitely something to highlight when applying for these kinds of roles. But overall, regardless of how much stats you'll actually need or use on your job, I think this knowledge is highly regarded and in demand, and it's definitely something worth highlighting and trying to develop further. And on a related note, what particular programs should you know how to use? Again, you might come across jobs that ask for specific knowledge of SBSS, R, MATLAB, or whatever program that they use for systematic reviews or neuroimaging or coding experiments. But not all jobs will require this. But I would say that if you have skills in any of these kinds of programs, 
it's definitely something to highlight on your resume as it could be something that makes you stand out from other honours graduates. And even if the job doesn't require that particular skill, it shows that you are able to learn new skills that go beyond the curriculum of your degree. So if you have some free time, it's definitely worth looking into some of these programs and trying to learn them, particularly if you want to have a career in research as these skills are also highly regarded beyond research assistant jobs. Communication skills. Now, I see communication skills as kind of being in between hard and soft skills, and I wanted to highlight this skill set as it's particularly important and relevant for research assistant jobs and a lot of other jobs as well. For a research assistant, written communication skills are particularly important as you'll be doing a lot of writing. Even if it's not manuscript writing, you'll be expected to write a lot of emails and summaries and communicate what you found or what you've done in a clear and concise manner. And again, this is something that you would have developed through your degree, but any publications or things that you have written that you have a clear record of that you can show to your prospective employer is definitely helpful, particularly if your role does involve a lot of formal written communication like manuscript writing or generating reports. And like with most other jobs, oral communication skills are pretty important too, as you'll be working with other people to some capacity. A good portion of research assistant jobs will require you to have some contact with participants, so it is important that you're able to communicate effectively and respectfully with different people. And if your lab or team is very collaborative, then highlighting any prior teamwork experience, even if it's just that matters, will be very helpful. I think one of the things that got me hired at my current job was the fact that I talked about my experience of working in a team in various restaurants. And lastly, organization skills. Now, this is a pretty broad skill set category because it can refer to personal organization skills like managing your own time, showing up on time, organizing your workstation, being able to keep on top of things, being able to prioritize any conflicting deadlines and generally not be forgetful when people ask you to do things, things like that. Or it can also refer to a more macro ability to be able to manage and organize projects. And overall, good organization skills are highly valued in a research assistant because that's practically in the name. You have to assist and be helpful. But I would say that some positions will value the skill more than others. For example, a role that's more focused on managing projects or things like scheduling in participants might value organization skills a lot more than a job that's more focused on doing literature reviews or running analyses. I think the skill could be demonstrated easily with any prior experience you may have had with managing uh, deadlines and priorities. So for example, if you had to manage uni work on top of extracurriculars or a part-time job, that's a great example of having good organization skills. And you can get a bit more specialized with the skill set and do a project management course. There's courses that go from actual degrees to really short three one-day courses that you can get certified in a project management skill. And this looks great on the resume and can actually open up an avenue for you to get into project management, which I hear can pay quite well. All right, so I want to say that this is an exhaustive list of skills that you need to cultivate in order to become a research assistant. But I would say these are probably the biggest and the ones that I would start with if I was thinking about how to make my application stand out. So I also wanted to dive into some tips for actually finding and applying for RA roles but I feel like this definitely can be a whole separate video. So what I'm going to do, if you found this video helpful and you want a part two on the process of applying to RA jobs, then let me know down in the comments below. And until then, see you next time.